any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Brian? Aye. 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 Motion is passed. Next, community concerns. Do we have any community concerns tonight? Denny. For an information, we just got approved. Oh, I just got the stuff tonight. The bird will do so very much 100 across from the airport. Okay. So, there's only one person left. They really need to check with the airport's closed. They're check with a few neighbors, but I also have to give them water and light because of the high tension lines in the back. They really don't like them getting sooted up because we couldn't burn a house because the, the lines were close enough where they would have received soot that would have been up on the hill on the corner. Mm -hmm. So just letting you guys know yeah. what we've been working on with MSI. When is the, the date for the burn? It was going to be this Saturday or next Saturday, but that's impossible because it took a while for things to get processed. Right. And so it's probably going to be towards the end of June because he doesn't want to have it up all summer. So I need to set up with a few other, a few other departments as a mutual aid for but it will, in that area, it's going to be a good, it's going to be big guns, ladders, like ladder plates, net guns, but it's going to be a good trial for the water supply in that area. So, good training. We're going to pull from one of our dry hydrants and we're going to pull from the bridge where they pull it from for construction because I want to see how much water we can get out of there constant. And that would be a good, good idea when we approach the state of So just wanted to inform you guys in case you've heard anything or anything, nothing was really on the line until this reason. Yeah. This takes a while. Great. Would you would you run a line from the bridge down there or no we're gonna go take the show. Because I think if I ran a line down there that rock wouldn't keep up with it with a five inch. You know, that's why I'm gonna get with the mutual aid departments and see what I can scavenger up because it's kinda hard in the summertime. One because the heat but a lot of people are on vacation and then they want it down sooner than later. I don't know if they'll let me push it till September, October. Now I'm gonna just talk to Dina again. She's the one I've been dealing with over there. He's the guy who's really property manager. So that's what I can say now. Uh, I'll get with PD, maybe highway once we really start getting a plan because it depends on, we don't, don't want to shut down. We're not going to shut down Route 100. It's just between Gales Road 100 and maybe the hydrant by Irving's, we're going to have tankers coming to over because we can't be diddly down or out of track. Especially with the structure that day without a hydrant right there. Right. So, I mean, once we kind of narrow down, I'll get with you guys at least give you a heads up. We're not going to have no hose, but we have signs. So, I don't know if we'll need to get with highway, but just want to maybe get the investigator if they don't have one there. I think we're going to have two. But just in case. Okay. But the house is staying, the tool shed is staying, the silo is staying. The rest of the fire is going. That's pretty far away anyway, the fire house and the shed. Yeah, I and mean, that's yeah, we're gonna start on. And before we start, we're gonna do some training with our guys to trench cut the roof so it doesn't break 
just in case something happens and it takes off, it's only going to go upstairs on fire. Okay. Do you think you have a lot of spectators? I'm sure you will. Oh, wow. Can I make a community event? Can I make a community event? Yeah, they want to park down the cornfield. Cornfield? I mean, you climb on that thing there and fly all day long. All right. It's. Okay. Don't matter when.
Is there any other community concerns? Yes, Bob, this is Don McDowell. Okay, go ahead, John, welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Hey, listen, I just want to thank the board uh, once again for putting up with all of our concerns about ATVs. That's, uh, you know, not just people that are for ATVs, but uh, I have concerns about them on the roads. I have I have two questions in regards to the informational meeting that's coming up. The first question is whether the board or when the board is planning on warning that meeting, or maybe it already has been warned. And the second question is just in regards to whether there will be, I know at some point we're gonna have a vote on this whole issue. Will there be a proposal? Does the board plan on having a proposal before the informational meeting, which would address what the actual vote would be? We have a, a proposal that was sent to us just a couple of weeks ago. So we have that and the, um, the meeting is set for July 6th, is that correct? So July 6th at the Oxbow Park at six o'clock. Okay, and so one thing we haven't done is put in a possible rain date. We didn't do that for them, but we can do that. But that's, that's how it is right now. We do have a proposal, proposal in front of us and um, that's, that's the state of the community-wide discussion regarding ATVs. So, that, so I guess my question is, is that proposal what we would vote on as residents in Morristown? I believe so. Okay, so there's there are several proposals out there right now. So I guess I'm just looking for a little clarification. As to <clears throat> right, well, there was, there was an initial one that was withdrawn. And so that's no longer a proposal. So it's currently, there actually is currently, currently two proposals. One is um, for just a couple of roads brought by a, a resident. And right. the other one is uh, the larger area than basically parts of the North End, um, but a much more scaled down version of the initial proposal. Okay. So I so the proposals that we're going to hear about tonight, then those are not what we're going to vote on when the town votes later on this summer. I believe it is. Yeah. Oh, so it's good to tune into it anyway, then you get familiar with what it actually is <clears throat> and everything that goes with it. So does that answer your question? Well, I guess I'm, I guess I'm still a little confused as to what the actual proposals Proposal will be that we're going to vote on. I have seen um, I've seen a I've seen a proposal that I think was presented by GM the Green Mountain ATV Club recently. That was in the last week. There was a proposal put together by Lisa, and that was in the last week as well. Those sounded pretty similar, but that sounds different than the proposal from a month or so ago. It is. It is, like I said, they withdrew the, the initial proposal. And so now the only one is uh, the one by Lisa and then the one that GMATV was presented to us. So that's so the that's only one. The, so that's the proposal then that the board thinks we will be voting on when we do vote later this summer? Yes, I believe so. Okay, but the board hasn't taken any action on that yet. No, no action at all. We're just doing initial discussions right now. The um, the one that GMATV presented to us, uh, our agenda says no action will be taken. And we're just sort of gathering information right now. Okay. So I guess it's safe to say at this point, we don't really know what exactly we'd be voting on when we do vote later this summer. Well, it's true. It could be modified once again, I suppose. You know, I'm sure it would, it would uh, be presented to us well in advance yeah. of that community-wide discussion. Okay. And then certainly advance, in advance of um, any vote. You know, I'm guessing the vote would take place sometime after that community-wide discussion. We haven't pinned that down yet, but that's the plan. Okay. I guess my, my point in my questions is it would be nice to go into that informational meeting knowing 
what the wording in the vote would be. I, I guess that's right. really what my question was. Uh, we intend to have everybody see that clearly for discussion purposes. Yeah. Okay, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Bob. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Is there any other comment? I guess I have, I have one. I, I guess I was kind of unclear. I thought maybe the meeting in Ju July was going to be more informational, getting ideas and sharing and looking at the proposals and maybe looking at um, uh, a trial period before the community votes on something. I was hoping we could find a win win. Right. Right. <clears throat> That's really what the discussion is for. We haven't pin that down to any one, one particular thing, Okay. you know, but <clears throat> kind of leaving it open, you know, so it's not the... So not looking at having a discussion in July and then down the road having a vote by the community or having a trial period in a vote, is, it, is that what we're kind of looking at? We, I don't think we've all decided that yet. Okay, that's something we might right. be discussing in the next... Right, it's obviously it seems to be ongoing, yeah. Okay. It, it, you know, it's, it's something that's changed, you know, it changed from the initial, initial thing. So, and it's obviously a very contested issue. Yeah. Contentious. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Is there any other comments? Lisa, do you have one? Yeah. Can I just say that I'm um, talking to Mr. McDowell that, um, I did do a visual map. I don't know if it got uploaded to the proposal or not so that it's very clear what roads are being asked of us, as well as um, some other information from Silver Ridge Road that, that's all on there. So I don't know if they're able to see the map and write out of like what exactly is, is expected, like what's being asked, but it's there if you want to email right. to you. Right, thank you, Lisa. Okay, any other community concerns? I have a question if um, in regards to ATVs, if you're still okay talking about this, I know you have a lot to cover. Is that okay? Go ahead. Is this uh, uh, Talia Brooks? Yes, I'm Talia Brooks. I um, live in Morristown. Um, I just wanted to see if the select board was clear as to um, what a trail is. I, I guess I'm, I'm just kind of at a loss right now because it seems like VASA uses the term trail for anywhere that an ATV drives, um, which does include class three roads. Is that, is that what your understanding is? Or maybe somebody in the um, ATV community could answer that as well. Yeah, I think someone from GMATV this time could answer that. Hi, Bob. This is Shannon. Frederick? Hey, you, Shannon. Go ahead. Good. And, and that would be correct. Uh, ATVs through VASA, anything considered a trail is anything that we we use as an ATV trail. Uh, that could be class four, class three roads, uh, whatever is deemed deemed possible and, and legally used by ATVs. Great. Thanks for the clarification. All right. Any other questions or comments? For now, we'll move to. Do we have any liquor control? No yeah. liquor control. All right, great. <clears throat> Next is <clears throat> new business approved still children's theater LLC for Oxbow Park use. Trisha, is that you? No. That's, actu that's actually me. Okay. Hi. Sorry. <laughs> that's okay. Um, my name Sorry, is. I think Oxbow, I think it's Trisha. Cause you <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry about that. I didn't hear that. Um, my name is Molly Mitchell and I run Stowe Children's Theater. I founded it, um, gosh, in 2014. And I've been running theater camps um, primarily out of um, either the um, Stowe Elementary School gym or the Stowe High School Auditorium. Um, both of those venues, for reasons which no, don't need explaining right now are not available to our, our program. Um, so I'm actually here tonight to gain your approval. And I obviously want to thank you all for taking the time and getting, um, looking over this with me and um, to take up our proposal. Um, I first would open it up to the board to ask if you have any questions. I do have my application submitted and we do have, um, 
the $1 million liability uh, coverage in place um, for the use of it. I have uh, numbers of staff and children that I can give you as well. Um, but I just kind of wanted to open it up to you guys and see if you had any questions for me directly. Go ahead, Tricia. I started the conversation out with back quite a long time ago. I did not, I guess we went back and forth and I finally said, I really need to talk to our town administrator in, about this because I didn't realize at first that they wanted it for five days and then for three shows. And our rate is three hundred dollars a day. They're not an organization from Morris Town either. I, I had some concerns about them using Oxford Park stage. And one of the days I have my very first music here. And I found that I started setting up at, you know, 12 30 or 1 o'clock. So I, I don't know if this is the best venue for this organization. They want to use the stage and they want to do rehearsals. You see in the application from like yeah. two, three every day. For a long time to be trying to come to our park or an out of town organization. I don't know how many of you all go to our park on a regular basis. But a lot of people use our park. And it's really, really. And the other side of it is, you know, it is $300 a day, and that's right. That's what our rate is for an organization. Um, I don't know how Molly feels about that. I don't know what she put in her application about it. But... Did you hear that, Molly? Did you hear I'm, ha I'm, ha I'm having trouble hearing her, actually. Is this Trisha? Yeah. Okay. Hi, Trisha. Hi. Um, I, I am. Uh, at a loss here because I, I was catching about every other word. Um, so oh, I, yeah. I, I did hear that you, you mentioned you were concerned because there are a lot of people that like to use the park. Was there anything else yeah. I missed? Um, that you are not a Morristown organization and our rental rate is $300 a day for that park. If our select board does approve this, and um, the Wednesday of that week starts my music series. And our sound guy would need to be in there before one o'clock that day, as it is, no matter what. I mean, our music series is our very first one of the season. I, I don't know that this is the best venue for you, Molly, to be honest with you. Now seeing you want it for five days, and I think I, like I said to you, I did need to speak to our town administration because as we got talking and you were like adamant that you wanted the, the stage, you know, when we first started, the conversation was, do you want to use any certain location in the park? Because if you don't, we've had this discussion with many organizations. If you're just going to look and use any little corner of a park, it's an open public park. But reserving the stage for five consecutive days and then three nights, I have concerns about it. Yeah, I can appreciate those concerns, Tricia. So um, we are, as an organization, uh, dedicated to serving really any kiddo who wants to enroll for our camps offerings. Um, so I, I understand my name does say Stowe Children's Theater, um, but we have in the past had children and served children in the Morrisville area. Um, our camp particularly right now also has kids um, enrolled right now from the Waitsfield area. So we're not um, we're not exclusive to Stowe only. It's it's where we operate. It's where I live. That's that's really just the name of it um, only. Um, so our our camp is like any other summer camp. It does it does run consecutive days. I don't know what the board needs to hear from me about that. Um, our rehearsal time is um, eight thirty in the morning to three in the afternoon. And the the time you and I had emailed back and forth there weren't, weren't any conflicts um, on the calendar. So this Wednesday event is completely new to me um, and we would do whatever we had to as a camp to accommodate that if we had to move from the stage over. Um, I have run this camp, uh, this, is, this will be my fifth year now. It's imperative for our type of performing camp for the kids to be in the rehearsal, in the performance space, a large chunk of the rehearsal time. Um, for safety reasons, for um, just understanding the flow of, of how the show would run um, for a lot of those reasons. Um, 
So that's, that's why we're asking for a big chunk of that time so that they can familiarize themselves with the stage, with the ramps, with the outdoor space, um, with the sound equipment, equipment we'd have to rent and with all of that. Um, so it's, I mean, I, I can't change the nature of our camp in, in our needs. Um, and that's, you know, we're asking for, um, for five consecutive days in addition to our performance dates. Um, the performance dates, um, the 19th and the 20th, we really only need the stage for a couple of hours. The performance itself is probably 30 minutes. We're only inviting parents to watch. We're having three performances specifically to decrease the amount of parents that are attending each performance. And I've asked every parent to certify that they will only attend one performance. So this isn't going to be, you know, a, okay. we're not going to invite the kids. But Molly, you have to understand, you can't limit. This is our open public park. This is our community park. Sure. I mean, every night you go down there and there's a lot of people around. I mean, you may want to limit it with your staff. You also do understand it's a $300 a day rental. Um, that's not very clear on the application. So no, I was not aware of that. I appreciate you bringing that, bringing me, bringing that to my attention, Tricia. Thank it you. It is on the application though. Um, yeah. it's, it's not super clear on the application, but I appreciate again, knowing, thank you. Yeah. Is it possible to have us table this issue for tonight and have you work directly with Trisha to try to work out a possible conflict or, or try to figure it out before it gets approved or denied? Are you, and are you thinking you will pay the fee? I, I don't know what would uh, keep me from paying it. Um, I, I wouldn't not pay it <laughs> um, if, I'm, I, using, I mean, if know, I'm using it for the, the entire day. Yeah. $2,000. Correct. Right. I, I think we need to have a discussion with the town altogether. I am feeling very uncomfortable about this. I think you're going to be very disappointed because there's going to be people screaming around our park all day long. I mean, I I see how many people go down. Um, Lamoille Home, not Lamoille Home Health, uh, Capstone has picnics down there three days a week and they sit right there in front of the stage. We cannot control that. And I just, as like I said, when I first talked to you, I started thinking of other locations, you know, the Senior Center or River Arts, um, I don't know what else you have looked into, but I, I personally don't think you're going to be happy about this whole situation. And I don't think you're going to have much control. I, I don't think it's going to work the way you're thinking it is, Molly. And I don't mean to be a downer about this situation, but it's just, it is our town public park. You know, there's dogs running, there's people playing, people play soccer down there. I mean, it's just very heavily used. Dan, yes, I, I, I agree with Trish on this. You know, I, I appreciate what Molly's trying to do, and, and she's looking for a, a format, a venue. Um, and I agree with Trish. I, I think with everything that goes on down there, it's going to be hard to control the sole usage for, for five days like that. I think that's asking a, a lot for that's, the Yeah, that's asking a lot from the town of Morristown. Um, so, you know, absent fees or anything like that, you know, um, even when we do have day events down there, people fence it off, things like that. But, I think it was only a one day. We got one right after this, but to do that for five consecutive days and then right? three nights. Yeah, three nights. Okay. She's looking for a stage. It's a beautiful place, and I appreciate people wanting to use it like that. I think it says a lot about what our park offers. Molly, has has she considered up at the school the outdoor the band shell at People's Academy? Um, that seems I, like the perfect I, venue for that. I have um, the the I haven't reached out to them specifically about the band shell area. Um, my understanding is that PA has a different school schedule than Stowe, and that um, they they don't. Okay. They, they they may have a different school schedule, but the graduation is is going to be the same week as Stowe's. So if the kids okay. are in school, um, it's going to be minimal amount of days. I don't know what the calendar is. Yeah, I, I spoke with a teacher. I spoke with a teacher. Graduation from the week before start yeah, the new year, so they're graduating 
the week before. So the band shell is only used for graduation. The Thursday, whatever that Thursday. Sure. Um, so I, I did want to speak to just in, in terms of asking a lot from Morrisville. I, I certainly don't, don't want to come across as somebody who's, you know, um, um, elitist in any way. I, um, I appreciate everyone taking their time to, to, uh, as we seek approval for any space, really, um, theater, as you know, any performing art has taken a real hit during COVID. Um, opportunities for kids are at a real, real minimum, um, especially the performing arts. Um, this is an incredible opportunity for children to build their literacy skills, to build their community involvement, um, and all of that. I, I spent some time at, right at the Oxbow Park um, for an hour or so the other day, and um, I didn't notice a ton of traffic. I didn't feel, I mean, it's, it's obviously a public park. Um, but you know, we're at a space is just as a, at a real premium right now. And that's why I don't have a problem paying the, the daily fee, obviously. Um, have you talked to River Arts? I haven't spoken to River Arts. I, um, I've been in their space, um, and it, it wouldn't be on, on the top of my list, um, in terms of functionality, uh, for the number of kids that we have. Okay. Um, and believe me, I know how the arts have taken a hit. I'm on the River Arts Board. I, I get it. I love the arts. And I love what you're doing, Molly. Let me just say, I, I think it's absolutely precious. But I, I would suggest that you go to the school first and see if they'll let you use the, the band shell up there. I think it's a much better location for what you're looking to do. I think you're going to love the privacy and you're going to love the location. And it seems like, uh, you know, you, you asking for something like this tells us that we need to change our policy on what the Oxbow Park can do. You know, you obviously didn't know, you know, it could be a complex with us booking five days in a row or whatever. And we ought to take a look at, you know, the policy for Oxbow Park because, um, you know, you may not be the, the first person or last person that tries to, to book it like this. But we've never had this happen never. before. No. But that's why I say, you know, it might be a better idea to take it offline and try to work it out, talk to Trisha, talk to some of these people, rather than have it go before us and we deny it because of that situation. You know, we're, we're all for it too, but um, if it's a complex for the Oxbow Park and it's not the right fit, it might be better to, to meet with Trisha and have her help you work it out rather than, you know, have it vote on tonight. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely amenable to that. How do you feel about that, Tricia? Yeah, excuse me. I'm sorry, Eric was talking. I'm sorry. What did you say? She's going to work with you. Uh, That's absolutely great. Is this going to be possible as a hybrid? This is what Eric was just saying, is maybe they could use the stage for their performances. Right. Because that's a great location. You're only talking an hour in the evening, you know. I mean, I think we could make that work. So for, if they wanted to do a one-day dress rehearsal, if they rehearsed elsewhere during the week, they did a one-day dress rehearsal, and then the two evening performances, mm -hmm. that wouldn't be as large an impact on, our, on the time frame that has to tied up now. Right. If that's like they say, something would be worth it. We could take this offline, so it could yep. be yep. funneled directly and not pick up our little thing we have to make. So you'll get in touch with Trisha and Molly? Yes, I've got her email. Is that uh, the best way to get a hold of you, Trisha? Uh, Molly, I'll send you my cell phone number later tonight. Sounds great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I've got a question, Bob. Oh, go ahead, Brad. Sorry. So I'm really starting to learn here. Um, I, I, I've grown up in this town. I've lived in this town 45 years soon to be 46. Our town wants to grow. Our town, other people want to come into our town to spend money, revenue for our town. Mm -hmm. We seem to be want to shoot it down. And I would have to agree with, with anybody who wants to come into our town to help us taxpayers pay our taxes. 
and revenue coming into our town, especially right now, would be helpful for everybody. Um, I'm pretty sure that the kids are going to want to get something at the grocery stores, waters, uh, Gatorade, sodas. That's revenue coming into our town. Um, I don't know why we're so scared of having revenue come into our town. It's scary. That really scares me. We're definitely not. We, I couldn't agree with you more, and the, the rest of the board couldn't agree with you more. We're just trying to figure out something so there won't be a conflict, because a lot of other things go on, too. We welcome these groups to come to our town. We, uh, we, we ask for, for this, but you know, we're trying to work it out. We're not trying to discourage people. I have no. done a lot of work with Molly. Yeah. I mean, I called Gloria at the senior center thinking maybe that they could work there because they have a set up stage. But, uh, yeah. Go ahead, Lisa. I just want to mimic kind of like what Brent said. I have been born and raised here, and I have never felt so unwelcomed in my own town with this whole trying to do something good for the community. I, I feel defeated by you guys, not you guys as a board per se, but as a town, I'm just disappointed. And yeah, I'm disappointed. I just wanted to mimic that. I don't think the Oxbow would be a good place for those children. There's a lot of, it could be a bad influence for a lot of kids, um, maybe doing it elsewhere, but I think it's a great idea, Molly. Right. Well, Lisa, we're sorry you feel that way. We don't, we don't in any way mean to discourage anybody from wanting to come to our town or use their resources or patron, patronize our businesses. We welcome it, but we have, we have certain things we have to go by. And I just want to add one thing. You know, Trisha does an incredible amount of work trying to find the right venue for, for events like this. A lot of and she's very, very good at that. And you wouldn't believe the amount of people that contact her on a daily basis and that Trisha works with to find the right spot to hold events. And, and that's what everybody here at town staff does. We don't turn people away. We, we spend an incredible amount of time working with them all the time to get them to the right spot where whatever event they're hosting is, is going to be enjoyable for them and for the public. So we do that on a regular basis. Yeah, from the outside looking in, not knowing all of that, you would, might not know it, but we do. All right, <clears throat> let's move to the next next one. Approve Nick Denoya's application for Oxbow Park. This is Nick's fourth year, fifth year doing this. Yeah, I knew he's done it before. Um, and uh, yeah, from the PD perspective, I think we totally pulled this off. Great. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, yeah. He's not with us tonight, is he? No, but it, it, Nick is uh, out west. You know, he's not even here. I've uh, actually talked to him a lot of times about it, too. We, like, he wanted to set dates way back. And, you know, Dan and I talked about it. And once they said you could do the 150, they were like, can I put some information out? But no, I, um, right, yeah. I honestly said well, yeah, really didn't need to. Right. Being that they had done this. Once again, Nick's worked with a lot on this one. We kind of held him off a little bit because we didn't know what the, the state guidelines would be. But, but clearly, by the point in time that he's doing this, it should be completely totally open. So right. we felt more comfortable bringing this one to the board. Things, once our you know, state guidance was a little bit clearer. Sounds good. So, do we have a motion for this? I want to ask a question about estimated number of cars 200. So, how do they work that with parking? Parking and buses? And no, and we opened our lower field. We put a, a, a livestock fence on the low side of our thing, and what they did is they opened it up and they uh, they put some um, roping across, and they have stand people that park them on the low side right. down below. And it works really, really well because it's even better than busing. Okay. Because then it's, and they make it so it's one way in, one way out, you know, like a park. It's no, they do it very well. Okay. Okay, do I hear a motion? Make a motion that we allow the Oxbow Musical Festival to use the Oxbow Park on July 31st, 21, from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. All right, I have a motion by Judy. Do I have a second? Sorry, second by Eric. Is there any further discussion? I just want everybody to know that he, he does set up time before that. 
it's, it's part of the application. Yeah. Oh, you mean the 6 a.m. time? So. Sometimes he sets up the yeah, book the day before so the afternoon before. Maybe. He spends that time, but he, he's also asking for, for setup time as well. Okay. All right, all in favor say aye. Brian? Aye. And the rest of the board? Aye. aye. Any opposed? <laughs> Motion is passed unanimously. Next, improvements to the intersection of Congress Street and Cherry Avenue. Just Todd on here. Uh, I'm here. Hi, Todd. How's it going, everyone? Good. Good. What so the, you plan no, the planning council's met, I think, four or five times on this over the course of the last two months regarding some pretty simple and low cost safety improvements that can be made to that intersection. Uh, a couple of select board members have actually been privy to these conversations by uh, attending some of the planning meetings, because obviously they don't have much of a social schedule if you attend planning meetings voluntarily. Uh, but that's just me. <laughs> that's, that's an insult to Judy, you know. <laughs> well, I, I, I think, Bob, all, all, everyone but you has been to some of these meetings to discuss this issue. So uh, all three, yeah, all three. I, I have a fly on the wall there, so I hear a lot of it. Well, good. So uh, the... Uh, there, I think the letter is pretty self-explanatory. I'm happy to take any questions about it. Any question? I did have the uh, chief and uh, Kevin review this as well. I, I know they both have some comments on it. Yep, go ahead. Well, the intersection stop, we're going <laughs> Yeah, yeah this is, come to the, come to the uh, microphone. Uh, yes, sir. Introduce yourself, Kevin. So this, I'm Kevin Barrows, the uh, highway superintendent. Um, looking at that intersection, uh, we're going to bring it around to tee it up so it's a 90. We're looking at, we're going to have to move the road about 20 feet to the left. So we're also going to have to take out two and a half sections of sidewalk, put in two and a half sections of sidewalk, go back probably 60 feet from Congress back in to get the the corner correct come down in square um it's just i don't know what our time frame we're looking at to do this it's, it's not something that i would have um, a whole lot of time on my plate to do this year it's something i could schedule in for next year uh, i don't have i wouldn't have the resources for it financially and or the uh, equipment and time to do it this summer Todd, wasn't there some talking about putting a bump out on <coughs> the road? I think yeah. you're you're, you're muted, Todd. Can't hear you. Sorry, uh, I don't want to speak for my board. This is a board discussion. I'm just the messenger here, so I think there might be planning council members on the call. I'm not sure. Is Etienne? Are you there? Etienne is here. Yeah. Is there. Yeah. I'm I'm gonna... I just one yeah. thing before I turn over to Etienne. To Kevin's point, I mean, I don't think you need to make it truly 90 degrees. Any little bit of reshaping and retaining the intersection, any little bit we can get improvement would be good. But I'll turn it over to Etienne in terms of uh, he owns property in that corner. So I think he can better speak to it than I can. Well, there are two two issues. One is just the uh, rampant speeding down through the dip at the Cherry Ave intersection. And that in combination with the, the dead ending of the sidewalk on the west side of the street, um, it seemed like a good opportunity to just discuss putting in a crosswalk so that pedestrians are able to make a, a cross there and address the speeding at the same time. <clears throat> so the letter tries to prioritize um, what we determined were fairly straightforward improvements. Um, we had an input from some of the other neighbors, in particular the Jennings, who live right across the street, and uh, we felt that the, the so if we were to stage such improvements, striping the street would be a, a high priority. Uh, as the letter says, sending letters to uh, area businesses, uh, the the noted, noted ones, to please implore their employees who use that as a uh, as a way to get to work to adhere to the posted speed limit. <clears throat> I believe we stated that it might be helpful to, to, um, to have better signage for, the, for um, the, showing the posted speed limit. And, um, and then, yeah, the structural improvements, I know we're all very 
sensitive to the cost of such items. So the, the idea was just to say, if we teed up that intersection, um, in particular, it would take away the slip lane nature. And, and, and the issue is that you can't see to turn right. Uh, you can't see up the hill toward the center of town unless you pull out acro well across the sidewalk and into the street. And teeing up would solve that issue. But we recognize that that may take a while. We would just like to propose it as something that could be planned for. Does uh, PD want to make comments on that, Richard or Jason Agar? Come to the microphone, Jason. <laughs> the only issue that we talked about was coming down the hill with the stop sign, um, possibly having an accident related to that. And another option was installing a radar signpost like we have up on Elmore Street. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Would that would that sign be permanent? The radar sign? Yeah. Yeah. I think we have the money. Yeah. Kevin doesn't know he does when he does. No, that's not in the letter. Uh, no. They got all the discussed at the planning commission meeting. Uh, maybe I misunderstood that. They took out the three-way stop. They're they're saying allow through traffic on Congress Street. Okay, my they stop the interior avenue, but they would like some other measures on Congress Street to try and lower the speed coming down through there. Right. And my mistake on that. Then. I thought it was a three-way stop. I think that radar sign is probably as good as effective mm -hmm. as anything. Yep. I mean, I was also wondering about having the crosswalk up across from Park Street as opposed to down where the sidewalk ends now, because that puts it up on the flat. We're the looking. proposal isn't for the end of the sidewalk for the crosswalk. It's uh, the family's name is, is in the. Canning City? Yeah. Yeah. So they, they're suggesting north, which we're coming across from the driveway that services the house across the street. So they're actually suggesting we put it at the crest of the hill, the line site, for the very reason you're saying. That's yeah, the same. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're saying you grew up with the same thing at the end of the, the planning time. You put it right at the end of Clark Avenue, your sidewalk already goes down. Right. It's yeah. already uh, yeah. accessible there. Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't have to cut out another section of sidewalk and make it handicap accessible to cross the street uh, if you did it at Clark Avenue. Would a crosswalk be able to be done this summer? So it's almost a, a dual proposal. For, for this summer, it sounds like we could do the, the radar sign, right. install the crosswalk, yeah. and then look at the next summer having Kevin work this project for the realignment in his, in his schedule. And, and I think if I can take a step further, what Kevin's talking about. We come off Cherry Avenue, come down Cherry Avenue from Maple Street. We have to put the bend to, in order to square up Congress, the bend has to be well away from the intersection. Otherwise, you have people cutting off that corner, which leads to traffic collisions at the intersection. So we need to make it straight as long as we can from Congress Street back up toward the base of that hill and put the curve further back. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. So if that's uh, the reason for the that the laundry yes 
How's that sound, Etienne? Uh, I think it sounds okay. I'm, I, I, uh, I didn't have the opportunity to check. Uh, it, are there, I don't know, uh, state engineered guidance for like putting crosswalks in particular uh, in, in and how sight lines should be oriented? I'm only a little bit concerned, just want to make sure that when people are in the road there crossing, they can be seen from both directions by, by uh, drivers. And that would be a lot of like concern about the Clark Avenue crossing. I understand the fiscal reasoning, but cars coming from Washington Highway on Congress Street, if they're in that dip, if we put the crosswalk too far away from the crest of the hill, there won't be any line of sight from cars that are in the dip if somebody goes into the crosswalk at Clark. I think it just needs to be looked at with Kevin and crew to take a look at it for the best place and can come back with a suggestion. <laughs> Yeah. Is that what your concern is, Edmund? That's what my thought had been. We go too far away. Yeah, it is, and and per perhaps we could make a, a put it on a list for a grant application for one of those um, pedestrian um, uh, flashing signs, the ones you activate when you're ready to cross. That way, it announces to in both directions that people they, those seem to be extremely visible to me. That that might be a possible solution, something that could be uh, paid for with a grant uh, later on. Uh, and then the one other item I, I do want to say that uh, the neighbors, uh, the Jennings in particular, noted that when that street was striped, there was a noticeable uh, decrease in speed, in average speeds, because it narrowed the perception of the lane. It, it makes the, it makes the road look narrower, and that helps to slow people down. Is it possible to have striping be done uh, on this street this year? Uh, I can look and see what we have funding and, and go from there. So if we can't do it this summer, then we could possibly get in the budget for next year? What would be 20, 2022? Yeah. What, yeah. what would be 2022? Yeah. So, so if it can't be done this year, at Jan, sounds like it, we can look into having it done the year after. Okay. okay. I got something on that, Bob. Go ahead. So I actually have one of our speed sides not far. And um, I can tell you that speed sign does not slow nobody down. I swear to God, they make that they want to see how fast that, that will go. Um, so <laughs> trying to hope, hopefully, the very good experience. I uh, I can say uh, I can walk down to end of my driveway. I can see how fast everybody's going, and not a one of them is going 25. They're going anywhere from 35 to 65. That sign is not going to slow nobody down unless there's a cop sitting right there at that street. Well, that that spot particularly hard because you're coming from a 50 down to a 25 so it's different than a 25 zone you know but i hear what you're saying i i use that sign every morning to figure out how fast i'm going there's a lot of people there so i have a funny feeling you're gonna waste some coin on a sign that's not gonna slow them down unless it's unless it's a cop sitting there well, these are all just good deterrents, especially if they're funded by the federal government or the state. It, it all helps. All right, how do we want to? There's some money out there right now. Ty, can't help with me. Kathleen's got some money out there right now, though. Crosswalk's money. Did you hear that, Todd? No, I can't hear Trisha very well. Sorry. Just saying, just Trish, check with Tricia. Yeah. About money. Tricia says there's money out there for that. I think the money, the uh, the radar rapid response beacons have come for is the Governor's Highway Safety Council money before previously. All right. I think it's a good plan. I think the planning council will bring it up. If you look over our history of the last 30 years, you've taken away the slip lanes from Needle Eye Road. Uh, Randolph Road, these have 
been problem intersections for years and years, and they do create hazardous situations because people look and left when they turn around. So I appreciate the planning council addressing this one and bringing it to our attention. I think it's a good project, but next year is probably a better time to rewind. Yeah. Meanwhile, we'll do some more homework about it. All right. Any other comments about this? Nope. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Thanks for bringing it to our attention. Next, discuss Fourth of July parade. I think from the staff perspective, we just wanted to get your thoughts. We've been kind of planning like there will be a Fourth of July parade, but we really hadn't talked to the select board about it. Um, just kind of wanted to get your thoughts. Uh, Eric and Patricia and I met what two weeks ago, a week ago, something like that, to talk about it. Um, you know, any thoughts from the board on doing it, not doing it? I think we gotta have it. We gotta have a Fourth July parade. So I mean, put this COVID trap behind us. It, it takes a lot of effort. I mean, it's an all hands on deck thing for PD. A lot of you know highway departments in that day. Yeah. It's a big event for for Christian to, to to start planning. But that's what we were kind of planning. If there aren't any objections from the board. That's the way we'll move forward. Well, you think it's nice to ask, though. Are we okay with that? Seven to nine, and fire will shoot into our office. Uh, field. Uh, yeah. Brian, you have any comments on that? No, sounds like a good idea. I think we got enough um, slack last year for not having one. And um, now that we can, and assuming the governor's going to open it up on July 4th, we should have a parade. We should have a party. <laughs> I have, a question. I have a question. So if somebody wants to participate in the parade, what are the steps to, to get, do you have to go, do you need approval? Do you have to get put on a sign up sheet? How does this work? Um, I, I organized the parade for the, the last 12 years. All you need to do is sign up in the parking lot corner of Munson Avenue on Herald Street and yeah. we register everybody the same day as the parade. So there's, there's no special permission needed. Um, you know, we, we invite everybody and anybody to be a part of the parade. Perfect. So if a group of us from our local ATV group wants to ride our side by sides over, would we have permission to ride them back after the parade is, is completed? You would have to, but I've had people have ATVs and stuff like that in the parade. They always trailer them in. Well, right. They trailer them in. But once we get, when we're on the other side of town, can we ride cool. them back to the trailer? Or do we have to bring the trailer? Yeah. What people do with, with stuff like that, I see a lot of cars, I have a lot of people bring that, they have somebody run the trailer back the other way around right. um, to be able to put it back on the trailer. So we have a lot of equipment like that that people do that exact thing with. Okay, they, so. They come up there and then uh, lead them back over at the school. Okay, so the answer is no, you cannot write it back. You have to have a trailer back. Right. Okay. And is that for anything that's like. That's, anything. Okay. Long tractors, tractors. So oh, farm tractors and all that, or no? Yeah. Well, they have to. If they have the road sign on, they can. If they have their agricultural agricultural sign. I just, I find that okay. All right. I mean, we have to have them registered. I just didn't know if we could. If we're able to ride them over, why we can't just ride them back? Just. Well, no, they're not able to ride them over. They get everything gets trailered there. No, I mean during then, the parade, Bob. Right. So well, I guess parade, that's a good. I guess that's a. Question, Bob, and to the rest of the board, Lisa, respectfully. Race car, let me just finish, please. The race cars, they're able to like go over and they ride them back to the, oh, you know, over on Harold Street to get back no, into. They're not. No, they do. Not. Oh, so, but you're saying no. So, anybody that's not registered on the road cannot ride it on the way back. I just want to clarify. Let's get the clarification from the police department. What do you guys say? Did you hear that? No, I cannot hear anything of that. It just needs to be a motor vehicle if they're going to drive back. Anything else would need to be trailing, like the board thing. I still can't hear them. So I, still, Lisa, I still can't hear you. Lisa, is there the point is that once the parade is over, the traffic routes are open again for the flow of traffic. So at that point, there's no special precautions. There's no traffic details in place. And so that's why you can't ride the ATVs back across to the parade room 
That's why the horses don't ride back to the prey group. That's why lawnmowers, uh, lawnmowers uh, that lot of stuff don't go back to the prey group. Many but many. they have once you're dropped off over on Har uh, Harrow Street, the folks, the trailer you come with, some will have to drive the truck and trailer around 15A and come in the back way to PA, waiting for you to come through the rest of the parade. Okay. That's the way it's always been. All right. Next, fireworks permit. And this is our fireworks permit for the 4th of July. Make a motion to approve it. I have a second. motion by Eric and a second by Judy. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Brian? Aye. The rest of the board? Aye. aye. Any nays? Motion is passed unanimously. Next, downtown designation. Trisha, is that you? It is. Thank you. Uh, and really, it's just an update. You know, every couple months, uh, then I have to get a little bit of an update. Uh, originally, I think they were shooting for the town plan in May, June. Uh, that was going to be approved by the select board. The original one, uh, New Year's so Our original timeline was to apply for this in downtown sometime in July, August time. That was our window of time. Uh, I know the planning council has held off to the census information not being released till August. So they're talking late August into September, the first set of hearings with select board village after that, October. I would tell you right now that you know, we're at least six months pushed out on this designated document plan, just so everyone knows. January, maybe, maybe yep. December. I, I, to be honest with you, I would imagine it's going to be in the next year. Okay. Just so you all know. We know. Uh, I just sort of put it on the back plate for that because there's not, until it gets through all approvals and it's fully approved by regional planning commission, there's really not too much fun should you want it right now. Okay. If it doesn't go through, then my time is wasted. Slow process. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks for the update. Any questions for Trisha about it? Brian? No, all set. Thank you. Thanks, Trisha. Next, number seven, accept resignation of Peter Hughes and appointment of Peter Hughes as the first line police officer. Richard, is that you? So, Peter Hughes gave us notice. He had done the 22nd of May, changed his careers, and be a plumber. So, but he has asked and agreed to be on, stay on as part time officer for certified trainer, you know, so we can make quite a bit of use of him. But, so, I'm asking the board to maintain his status as a, or change his status to part time. Same rate of pay, no benefits. Okay. Any questions about that? The board? Well, two separate motions, one for resignation, one for the I make a motion that we accept uh, Peter Q's resignation with our thanks for his years of service to our community. I have a motion by Eric. Do I have a second? Second by Gary. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Brian? Aye. The rest of the board? Aye. Aye. Motion is passed unanimously. I don't know if we wrote it down. Yeah, I don't know if we wrote it down. I thought it was on there. So I make a motion to appoint Peter Hughes as a part time police officer. Uh, no benefits rate of pay is $25.37 per hour. I have a motion by Eric. Do I have a second? Okay. Second by Gary. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye, Brian. Aye. The rest of the board? Aye. 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 Motion is passed unanimously. All right, next. Stay right there. Yes, sir. Review and approve lease. <laughs> 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 So, 
this year, of course, as far as sedans for police cars, it's pretty much limited down to the Dodge Charger. We actually have been looking at this for a while, but we finally were able to get something put together. But uh, it's the same idea, same plan as before. It's a, like a turnkey operation car. Everything is provided with the, with the exception of a radio, two-way radio, which will come out of the old car. And it's through Mid-State Dodge. You finance with Ally Financial yeah. for a period of three years. Yeah. The payment would be $13,962.20 a year, which is yes. A year for three years. And I have budgeted 14000 for that payment. So I'm asking that you allow us to move forward with this cruiser so we can order it and hopefully have it in three to four months. Yeah. This is a three-year lease? With yes. Three-year Correct. Same lease to own, same idea that we've always done. Well, it's been about 20 years. So. We haven't done Dodge in a long time. No, yeah. I've never done Dodge. No, no, I didn't think so. No. I was thinking back to Dodge, Dodge Polaris way back in right. the 70s, maybe. Yeah. yeah. No more crown picks, no more imbalance. No. Yeah. No, I don't know what they're going to make next. Yeah. This is an all wheel drive as well. Right, that's really so, good. Yeah. It's a six cylinder. They don't it's need a V6, it. which yeah. generates almost as much horsepower as the Hemi, so. Yeah. Should be a response yeah, to the vehicle. So. Pretty cool. Check on electric. I'm sorry, what? Check electric vehicles. <laughs> no, I didn't. That's for, for the next generation. So. All right, do I hear a motion regarding that? I make a motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye, Brian. Aye. And the rest of the board? Aye. 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 Motion is passed. Hang in. Follow up to that would be the Impala that we have now. It's a 2014. It's in need of repairs again. Okay. So we you know, took it off the road. It's getting so, pretty soft, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's getting soft. <coughs> you know, it's just you know, one use. thing right after the other. So I'm, I'm, I want to, you know, we're going to strip it out and try to sell it. So I'll come back to the board when we get an offer. Get rid of it. No need to have it on there a lot. So we can pack his deal with a dump truck. Kevin's got that with a shot and get two birds in one stone. I think <laughs> cars are selling pretty good. Right. I did a appraisal on it, but eight thousand dollars. But I I don't I think we'd be doing good to get three or four. So right. How many miles does that one? I think it's seventy-five, eighty thousand, something like that. A lot of engine yeah, hours, just a lot of hard hours, a lot of hours. So, all right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's do the uh, road naming first here. Later, add this into the agenda. I'm going to do the first one, the Mayan Palong, so let's go there. Oh. These are all just new roads that they're going to these are currently have. Um, new house to build on the fire. Um, they've been through the 911 review, um, and there's no problem with being one of them. All the that currently going as well. Okay. All right. Do I hear a motion regarding these? Let's Make a motion we approve Perseverance Lane for. We'll say something else about it. No. It's approved perseverance. As, okay. As presented. As presented. I have a motion by Judy. Do I have a second? Second. Gary has a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye, Brian. Aye. The rest of the board? Aye. Aye. Motion is passed unanimously. Next one. Maya Salon. I make a motion that we uh, accept the name of Fern Hill Lane. 
Okay, I have a motion from Judy. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Oh, second by Brian. <laughs> Any further discussion? All in favor say aye, Brian. Aye. And the rest of the board? Aye. aye. Motion is five. All right, next. Next on the agenda is number nine. Lisa discharge proposal request to use roads for ATVs. Uh, no action to be taken. Lisa, go ahead. So I'm simply just asking for permission to use Fraser Road, uh, the end of Fraser, the all the way to the end of the Fraser Road, the dead end part to Trombley Hill and to connect from Trombley Hill to Cleveland Corners without an end date, if I can, please. Okay, do we have any uh, discussion or any any thoughts on that? Yeah, I just have a question. This is Jeff Egan from Morristown. Um, so what what non-public road ATV trails would these roads access? So that's gonna, that's going to be able to connect us to Hyde Park to where we can get onto Hannah's Trail to get over to connect over to um, up to Cooper Hill and over to connect us up to Eden to where there's so, so no, but I mean, yeah. what I'm asking is in Morristown, what ATV trails does this public road access allow you? There is no ATV trails in Morristown at this time. Isn't that true, Janet? That's my understanding. That's why I'm asking. Right. There is, there yes. is no current trail. Okay. Thank you. I also, I also want to add that some of the trails, Jeff, are on private property, so they're not going to be marked on the Vasa Trail also. And thank you, Elise, for that clarification. I guess that's part of why I'm asking, because we are talking about public road access in Morristown, um, and if there are ATV off-road trails that are not public roads, that should be part of the conversation. If they're not, that needs to be clear. Um, you know, I, I completely, I think ATVs are awesome on what I would define trails, which is a little different than what we discussed earlier, because, you know, the ATV club seems to define anything an ATV drives on as an ATV trail. Um, so that's, I'm just, you know, I just want clarification that this is, there are no trails in the the more common parlance as opposed to public roads that you're currently asking access for shannon no, no. do you have any comments about this you started to he is correct there are no actual off-road trails uh being suggested at this time for the morseville area um we are we are looking at connecting areas together by using that and using Morseville as, as part of a part of an area to, to help Morseville with commerce and help people enter the town of Morseville to spend money, basically. Um, but no, there are no actual off-road trails in Morseville at this time. Okay, thank you. Um, and you know, I guess the the bigger question I would have outside the Morristown conversation is, you know. Uh, and I can, I can look at some of the maps and the common knowledge and other information that, you know, the community is putting together. Um, say Morristown, Hyde Park, Johnson, you know, I would like to hear from Green Mountain ATV and just from the members of the ATV community. Um, and, you know, I'm not totally foreign to this. You know, like I have a KLR 650. You know, I, I go on the Northeast BDR. Um, you know, I'm not completely foreign to off-road vehicles. What I'd like to know from the community is how many miles of non-public road trail are there relative to miles of public road trail? Obviously, Morristown has none. Um, and But just in general, because, you know, from when I look at the Green Mountain ATV maps, you know, basically what I see is an extensive public road network that links to, a, you know, quite insignificant off-road trail network, which, like, you know, Gorham, New Hampshire, they're lucky. They have that big park that allows them to use public roads to access a significant non-public road network. Um, I just don't see that here. And so I guess that's where I, I guess as a taxpayer and a resident of Morristown, I'm just trying to understand, 
you know, what really the end game here is, is the end game that Morris Town becomes next Gorm, New Hampshire, that we are the, we are the hotel spot. We are the place people come and, you know, unload ATVs so they can go ride public roads in Hyde Park, Morristown, Johnson for an insignificant amount of off-road access. You know, I, I just want to get a, a sense of the, the big, the overall picture here. So, thank you. So, to answer that, go ahead, Jeff, go ahead. Go ahead Lisa, then, then you can, Shannon. Go, go ahead, Lisa. Um, it's, Jeff, it's free money for our community. It's costing our town no money at all to bring in the TVs for, for staying over at the hotel, to having dinner with the Shalmont, to buying gas at Max. It's, it's free money. I don't see no harm in asking. That's all. Yeah, and... and Sorry, go ahead, Brent. Uh, Shannon was next, so. Or yeah, who uh, was next? I mean, I'm deferring to I mean, it, next. I, I do agree with Lisa. It is, it, is, it is a huge commerce addition to a town. Um, the end game, the end game would be to find landowners with, with property that are willing to, to give us a chance, to give us an absolute chance to make rideable trails in our system how many trails do we have that are actual non-town off-road trails uh honestly if you look in the map you know the same thing i do it's very it's very little um we probably have two sections that are that are not very long we use a lot of class four roads uh unused automotive class four roads and some that are automotive used for travel um the end game is growth Seriously, the end game is hopefully we can get to landowners that are willing to give us a chance to allow us to go off-road. There's no place we would rather be than off-road, but in, in, the, in the interim, having some commerce in towns, any town, has got to be a plus to, to, to everybody. I realize well, and respectfully, I disagree. Well, like I agree with the idea of trails. Jeff, would you please not address um, Shannon? Yep, my apologies. When, uh, many of you folks are speaking. Please address the board. We don't want to have you talking to each other. You know, we got to we got to go by the rules of the meeting. And yeah, and I'm, I'm still learning that. I, I apologize, Bob. Thank you. Yep. Um, respectfully to the, and please finish. I said no harm taken, but you're welcome to speak. Go ahead. Uh, respectfully, like I, I, to the to the board, um, my you. Yeah. If we had a big chunk of land, land with a public landowner or private landowner who had a potential trail network, they were going to build that we needed to define one road or an access point to that area, I would not be having this conversation with my community. You know, so I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm an off-road motorcyclist. I'm a motorcyclist, adventure sports. I'm a mountain biker. I'm a backcountry skier. You know, a lot of what I do is I go to a trailhead and I access the specific activity that I enjoy. Um, asking for large sections of our community's roads to be open up to ATVs and the significant safety issues that have been defined by the companies who manufacture these. It, it respectfully to some of the other opinions presented to the board, I, I don't necessarily agree that there is like an, an arguable net benefit. Um, you know, and I would love it if there was if there was a thousand acres that we could all go play on on our our motorsport things in our community that had a trailhead to it. You know, sort of like Gorham. Gorham has a large public park that ATVs access. Um, we just don't have that. So I will end my comments there. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Go ahead, Bob so our group just Sunday spent a little over $1,200 just at the East Side restaurant. 
just at the East Side restaurant. And that's not counting how many times that I had to stop <laughs> to get gas. Trust me, I got a pig. And uh, just to pull into different towns to spend that much money for one meal, that is, that would help a lot of restaurants out. Um, and we rode a lot of trails right from Hyde Park and um, where we got gas to start off was Eden General. So whatever money that really ripped into that gas station, we could have that revenue in Morristown that uh, um, I also have a, a rig that has blinkers on it, that has a horn on it, that's more probably safer than a lot of cars that I see on the road where they don't have blinkers, they don't work, or what have you not. So um, I am all for opening up anything that we can just to bring revenue into our town. Thank you, Brad. Brandon, you have a comment, Brandon? Uh, in, in reference to the last gentleman we were talking, um, it, you know what? He was talking about he likes to bicycle, he likes to hike, he likes to ski, he likes to backcountry ski, he likes to ATV. Respectfully, we yeah. All, but we, we all understand that, but, but the understanding comes with, like the rail trail, that is given to the public to ride on uh, ski areas obviously you pay it you pay a fee but those are created and we're trying our best to create something and i i realize that roads aren't, aren't the optimum thing but as for as far as i'm concerned safety of it uh doing the research that i've done it it, it doesn't really differ from anything else um but having opportunities to grow are having opportunities to grow are, are huge and we need to start somewhere. And also, again, with the financial part of this, of having towns that are willing to accept accept us as what we are. We're sports enthusiasts, just like a bicyclist or a skier or a hiker. Our sports are just different from yours. And and I believe that as a as a very large group of group of individuals that like this sport, having opportunities. Is, is great for us also. And it's also beneficial to the towns that we join. So that's my piece. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So I appreciate to add the something or, I'm sorry, Lisa, were you next? Go ahead. Introduce yourself, please. This is Talia Brooks again. I guess after you guys answered my question earlier, thank you very much. Um, I feel like this is kind of putting the cart before the horse. It would seem like you would want to have an established trail system before allowing roads. I mean, if I were coming here from out of state to um, recreate and I, it was posed to me that I was allowed to be able to do something and then I got here and all I was doing was touring local roads, I would be pretty irritated and would you ultimately be doing your sport a disservice at that point? Would as a disservice? Uh, I don't believe so at all. I mean, people know, pe people know what it's about, and and we are we are doing our best to grow as quick as we can. If if I would be willing to have a large landowner individual give us give us a chance to be off road, that would make us grow. That would help us grow. If I was if I had the state behind us or you know, the federal behind us, which gave many many well i wouldn't say many people the rail trail gave the rail trail a few million dollars to allow a few people to ride it that would be beneficial to us but we we are doing our best to to grow in the manner that is is allowed, allowed to us at this point okay thank you thank you do we have any comments from the board no. lisa I also want to know why um, you guys posted on here that um, no action is to be taken. Who dictates um, that decision? Well, that decision was from everybody agreeing that this was going to 
be voted on by the town. So and I, know, I understand when when we um, and well when I have been saying and I've said it many times on many different places that I think this should come to a town vote. That was really when um, it was a much bigger proposal. It was a proposal that was involving many town roads, many miles of town roads, and affected many, many people. Um, this last proposal that's come is a very scaled down version of that. But what we had talked about is have it go for a town vote where there was a, a time for everybody to discuss everything. And our intention, our intentions were to have it tonight, but because of uh, the public outpour, if you will, to us saying that they didn't feel safe enough and um, a lot of people weren't fully vaccinated yet, we called off and pushed back the meeting from tonight because in my mind, we, we would have been able to uh, discuss it and then maybe have a vote. I understand uh, that. I understand that, Bob. I think you. I think we skipped um, one article. We were going to talk about Fraser Road and Trombley Hill, and then do the proposal That's section. What I'm on right now. I'm oh, okay. Still on oh, okay. All right. So I just, I just want permission to ride Fraser Road to Trombley Hill. I just want the permission. Right. And I don't. Uh, yeah, you have a and, that, and that in itself should not go. Should, it should not have to go to. The town. the town to vote. Well, that's up asking, for the I, board, our board to decide. I'm, at, I'm asking the board right now. I pay your salaries. I'm asking for you guys now for permission. And I, and I want an answer tonight. I don't want to take this to a vote. I don't agree with it. We can deal with the other one with a vote, but this is permission. I And I want an answer tonight. Does anyone want to speak about that? Comments, and this and this is for me, me and my family to use, not as a club. I'm asking for me personally. Any comments? I, I would just simply say that Lisa, you are one of many people who would love to have the MLS access to the town roads to get from their homes to the communities that have already opened their roads. If we do it for you, then we are setting a precedent to have to do it for anyone in Morristown to do the same thing. And that's, that's where we're at right now with a larger proposal is there's a lot of public outcry about it. So to do it on a selective individual basis, uh, I, I could not support that because it would throw us into a, a position of having to take requests from anybody and everybody that lives in Morristown to give, you know, get permission to go from their house to the Park. This is just, I am so, I'm pissed. I'm just gonna say it. I'm pissed. I'm disappointed in all of you. I'm sorry, Lisa. I, you know, I, I, I've been very upfront with saying yep. that I, so, I want to see this come to town vote, you know? I, at this point, I want to know who I can go above you, you folks to, to challenge uh -huh. this or appeal it. Whoa. That's what I want to do. I'm sorry to hear that. I pay a lot of taxes in this town, and I'm asking to ride a road where my machine is already registered. It's insured. I have fast attacks. I'm following the law, unlike some of the people who drive this road with a regular regular vehicle. I'm not asking a lot, you guys. What we're trying to do, so we're trying to do this in the most fair and reasonable way. You're being and that unfair. is allowing a full public out, public input. And the fairest way is to have, because it's such a contentious issue, to have um, the whole the whole public decide. You know, not just the five of us. I I received many many comments that you've got to have a public vote. You've got to have a public vote. You can't. Well, you got to have a public vote because people are against it, right? There's a lot of things that you guys talk about in every meeting that I don't agree with. And I don't sit here and say, no, 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 no. Like, that's not how it goes. That's not what, that, that's not how this is supposed to be run. I mean, if, if something big, you were just talking about a, a, a big lease with another vehicle, right? For the town. Like, that's a lot of money, right? I'm not asking for any money. You're right. May I, add something, may I add something? 
I, Ed's, Ed's been waiting a long time with his hand up, and I'd like what to call fun? on him. Well, thank you. thank you very much. Um, actually, not that long. I'm pretty patient. I, I would, if we could get back just briefly uh, to the uh, to the point of the uh, ATV uh, organizations and individuals uh, um, requests, specific requests. Uh, reading that carefully and uh, learning more about uh, Morristown geography and and so on. Um, what really strikes me is the expressed purpose of these requests, which is for the riders to get their, themselves and their vehicles onto um, trails where, where that um, activity is welcomed. Uh, and what we're almost entirely talking about is towns out outside of Morristown that simply allow ATV use on their public roads. If they want to do that, that's fine. That's not uh, an issue that I should be properly involved in. I don't live there. Um, <clears throat> but that overall proposal is considerably weakened when they put um, a segment of Morristown Public Highway in the list to take them down to Northgate Plaza Shopping Center uh, if it were simply, uh, we need to get our vehicles from where we live uh, or, or a place where we can trailer them and is convenient place uh, that we like to drop them, uh, unload them and then go riding that's within our town. Um, I think the sh uh, simply selecting the shortest possible path uh, to uh, a road or highway or genuine trail that's outside of Morristown would be the choice and would be all that would be necessary. But that list is, is way too extensive to allow for that justification. There's just too much going on. What it really sounds like is what they want to do is just ride around uh, 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 Morristown to the extent that they will be permitted to do so. And um, so to bolster that argument, the economic argument is brought into that. And frankly, I think it's inappropriate if we're discussing a trail proposal to talk about uh, um, a presumed economic advantages. It is really not clear that that would be the long-term end result. Uh, 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 improvement to the town's welfare economically or any other way. If you look at what has happened in other towns, other states, most notably Gorham, New Hampshire, um, that becomes a, a really debatable argument. I don't have the answer. I don't have the actual numbers. I don't have the economic analysis of it in front of me, although um, that seems to be in the works by people in other states. So we'll have that at some point. But that's a, aside from the fact that it's a doubtful argument, we're just discussing roads, specific roads, will we or won't we? And I don't think you should mix the arguments. So those two things, I, I, it, it raises an eyebrow when they start asking it to be able to drive from wherever they are to Hoagies, that's a shopping trip. Um, when I go shopping, I use my car. It's much more comfortable. So thank you for listening. Thanks, Ed. Brian, you've been quiet. Have you got comments on this? I got comments. But I don't know if I dare, should say anything. I will say I want to apologize, Lisa. I think once we go to vote, you're going to be surprised how many people in this town either do not care, the, so they will vote yes just because they think it's the right of the people who have these. Uh, I said right along, and I think you should get a $72 plate, just like I have in my car, and you drive it any place you want. So that's my way of looking at it. I do think it will bring some money into town. But even if it doesn't bring in as much as we don't think it is, these people buy this, they're having a hard time with the COVID thing being shut in their houses and things. If there's any way, I mean, I don't know as we should do it. I'm waiting for that vote. I wish we could have done it quicker. I think you're going to find that vote's going to be surprising to people. 
Yes, there's some that are still going to vote no, but I've talked to a lot of people who either do not care, but a lot of them say, so I would vote yes, they say. No. <clears throat> now I'm Hi in there. This is This is Jeff Egan with uh, Morristown Resident. Brian, can I ask exactly what you're apologizing to, uh, I have to mention her, but to Lisa for? You're a member of the select board of this town. Well, what do you yeah, apologize I, I to knew Lisa for? Because I felt like I should, uh, first of all. Um, no, I want you to clarify what you're apologizing to Lisa for. You're a member of my select board. What are you apologizing to her for? I knew I was going to get myself in trouble, and I don't. Yeah, you are. Like, what are you apologizing, to Lisa, for? Because I feel I want to, because I think she has the right to us going to vote, and let's get this over with. Every meeting we have, it goes on and on and on about. Right. So, so I would ask that now that Brian stated a clear opinion on this matter, that he not be allowed to have an opinion on the select board on this matter. Oh, really? <laughs> Brian's not allowed to. All right. So, <laughs> may, may I speak up? Go ahead. Go ahead, Chan. Thank you. Uh, to, to, put a, to put a slowdown pace on this conversation, you know, I believe, like Brian said, I, I believe that we should let this go to a vote. You know, it would be great for us to be able to get Silver Ridge Road open to get, get back to our fuel again. And we would love to see that happen sooner than later. But we're all having this argument, and we've had this argument for a while now. It, as it's this nation, as far as I remember, is a democratic process. Let's just get the thing to the democratic process. Let's get it to a vote. See what happens. Win or lose, somebody's not going to be happy. But that's the way democracy works. And let's just let's just go that way. Right. I, I'm in complete agreement with you. And to the board, I I repose my question. Brian has made a clear statement of a bias, and I need that on the record. Well, I believe Brian's not a bias. Brian has an opinion, just like all the rest of us on the board do. I feel I feel bad for Lisa too because this whole thing's taken a really long time, and I also agree that it should be brought to a vote as soon as possible. Like I said, I want to see it be a town vote. And I actually think, as Brian does, that it'll be very, it'll be very revealing to a lot of people what the vote will be. Just judging by my conversation with the folks in Johnson and the folks in Hyde Park, um, I, think, uh, I think it's a lot different than what the people are thinking it's going to be. And that's why I'd love to see it come to a town well, vote. And, and respectfully, like at the end of the day, when we have a vote, I'm going to, I'm going to go with that. Like the community will vote and I will accept that. Exactly. I'm not questioning that. But what I question is when members of my select board make very clear um, their biases to a specific part of the constituency, instead of saying we are here to hear the members of this community and make a decision based on the facts. And that, that's a little disturbing. I'll be quite honest about it. Well, I, I feel just the opposite. I think everybody is entitled to their opinion. Brian has his opinion. I respect that. I respect everybody on, on this board's opinion. And that's why we've got five people on here. And that's why we vote. This issue is too contentious to, to be decided by us five. That's how we all feel. That it should be decided by, you know, 2,000 people, not five. So that's our intention. Mike, you have a question. Go ahead. Yeah, Bob. Um... It seems to me that um, other members in this in this uh, meeting, um, I really uh, I, I don't know how to I don't know how to say it, but it, it seems like they are personally attacking my wife, and I am not going to sit here and listen to it any longer. Uh, my wife is doing the, my wife is, excuse me, my wife is doing what she thinks is right. Other members in on this meeting disagree with her. They're allowed to disagree with her, but personal attacks on my wife, I am not going to tolerate. Thanks, Mike. Please. I wish you'd been protecting me for the past two months. I've been getting attacked 
<laughs> Bob, about this whole process. Bob, I have the utmost respect for you, and I have the utmost respect for everybody on that board. But I, I'm not going to sit here and let my wife be attacked personally, and it, it, it better stop. And at the end, probably the message done. Thanks, Mike. Mom, thank you to the board for negotiating through this whole communication. Is there any other comments about this? Yeah, I got something, Bob. I'm, I'm curious where we're at because we've melded both of these items on our agenda into one large. Right, item. it pretty much is both. So I don't want to leave this, then read the next one and open it all up again. Right. I'd like for us to possibly look at this as we have encompassed our conversation around both of these proposals. Yes. So when this conversation ends, we can go on for the rest of the event. Right. I agree. That's why I'm trying to get clarity and closure on each one. So I, I, and I would add, and if I could add to that, I, I would just say uh, the Green on ATV proposed two plans, plan A and plan B. I would simply say the difference between plan A and plan B is the use of Langdale Road and Sunset Drive. So, and I'm going to tell you that those two draw, those two roads do not connect in Morrisville. They are not public highways that come together. Langdale Road ends, it's a dead end road. Sunset Drive ends. The connecting point between them is Buckwheat Lowe's driveway. It's privately owned, it is not open to the public. Much to his angst, Google Maps shows it as a through fair. And UPS likes to dive down through the door yard during the delivery. However, that, those two roads don't connect. So I, I wanted to just bring it to the ATV Club's attention that Plan B really has loses its relevance because of that. And Plan A encompasses everything else in Plan B, from what I can see. So to the point that was made way earlier is which proposal are we going to be talking about? I would encourage the ATD group to narrow it down to the plan A that you have brought before the board. Um, those roads do connect it to the areas that you're discussing. So if that makes it easier for the public to understand what we're discussing going forward. Uh, but I would leave that for the club to uh, edit or alter their proposal if they so choose. This, Shannon, do you want to speak to that or Lisa? I, I, I do. I do agree. I mean, obviously, we, we look at maps online like everybody else. And if there is definitely no connection there, that is we don't want anything to do with it. Obviously, uh, let's narrow this decision down. Let's narrow this this current dilemma down to when we vote come July or when we when we get to that point of voting, whenever it may be that we, we stick with the plan of what we've got now. To, to just gain us access. And, and I would hope to think that in the future that, that we, could, we could work with it. You know, we don't need a big plan, a 10 year plan. We don't need a, a, a two year plan, but let's see how things go with what we had under the original agreement that we had, that we, we'd hoped that would, would have stayed like it was in what we do understand, or I do understand that the wording of it complicated things. So let's just work on that for our town vote meeting and, and move on from there. Yeah, uh, Lisa, go ahead. So I'd like to add to, I'd like to add to this that um, Alan and myself, Alan is the um, secretary, the treasurer on um, our club and I am the secretary. Her and I both went over to Silver Ridge Road one day last week and we gathered some very interesting information. Um, we found one resident on that road who was, she was elderly and said, nope, she's not interested. Um, she doesn't, it's a no. We saw one other woman who was um, either, either way, she didn't care um, and she didn't want no. to like cur yes. cause any problems. So she no, was just not. either way. The rest of them were all, yes, get this road back open. We had no problems. The people who should be having noise issues aren't, and they've been there for 45 years. Um, they want this access open, the trailhead open just as much as we do. I got a letter from a business owner from Jeff Manosh, which I supplied to Dan. I don't know if it's been posted yet, but he owns 
property on Silver Ridge Road, plus many businesses who is taking a direct hit from, from this, from opening weekend, it would have been a busy, busy weekend for the Shama in the hotel. And I think at this point, um, if we can just focus on opening that up, I think with the data that I, that Ellen and I gathered, majority rules here. And I think that in itself says a lot. And if we could just focus on that and get that open, I think that'll make a lot of members happier. It will cause a lot of less problems with people pulling in there, unloading their machines and like, oh no, I can't go any further. I think we should just focus on that. Thank you. I got something. Go ahead, Brian. So, so, so as a taxpayer of Morristown here, um, I, I agree that Brian, he does have a vote. Brian does have a voice just like the rest of us. So as a taxpayer in Morristown, I, I, I would love Brian's, Brian's vote. So um, whether it's right, wrong, or indifferent, everybody's got to vote. I'm only one person, just like everybody else here, as well as one person. So um, I honestly believe that Brian's not biased on on this subject and um i want him to vote for for whatever he chooses okay thank you mike i i just have uh, a question bob if we handcuff every politician's uh vote based on their personal opinion wouldn't 112 percent of politicians never get a vote just a question. That's a good point. Thank you. Bob, Bob, can I ask a question? Well, it's, it's a statement. Can you introduce yourself, please. I'm Don McDowell. Go um, ahead, Don. So I'm going to go, I'm going to make a statement more than a question. But at the very beginning, I asked the question Will the select board? suggest a proposal that we would vote on and i was told it seemed confusing but i was told that there already was a proposal out there i think it's really clear right now at this point in the meeting that there are multiple proposals there's plan a proposals there's plan b proposals there's propo there's proposals from a month ago i would i would respectfully suggest that the board for the next meeting consider narrowing down the proposal that we are going to entertain this summer because right now there's multiple proposals out there which was the reason for my question from the beginning and so we can, so we can just start to bring some closure to all of this i i'm as tired of this discussion as i'm sure you guys are and i just um I would just ask that uh, I would just ask that you, the board, consider a single proposal at the next meeting and carry forward with it. Thank you. Right. Well, that, that was going to be a comment I had for the ATV club. Um, one thing that's kind of difficult navigating in this uh, forum, this Zoom meeting, is I see there's five representatives from the GM ATV club here. And it would be really beneficial if we just had one person that, that represented the club. And, you know, I'm, I might go to is Shannon. I see Chad's on there too, and I saw Spencer on there too, um, as well as Lisa and Brett. And it would be helpful. My, my question is to Shannon, if um, I believe we spoke before that that initial proposal you had sent out, that was withdrawn. So forget about that. That's not an ongoing active proposal. So disregard that. Uh, as, as Eric pointed out, the plan B is not a viable proposal because those two roads don't join. So am I ready to say we're going to throw plan B out? So then we have pretty much plan A, which is also, it does encompass uh, Lisa's proposal. So really it's only one proposal. Is that correct, Shannon? 
That, that would be correct, yes. And, and that will be the proposal that everybody gets to vote on when the town votes, is that correct? One proposal, one vote. Okay, now not, not, what, I, what I see is we wanna make sure that everybody is clear on what that is. And, and you know, hearing, hearing uh, what Don was saying is, we've gotta make sure that we have the proposal. Well, it's not us that has the proposal. The proposal comes from the GMA TV club. Okay, and, and that's what's gonna be voted on. It's not the town that's giving the proposal. Uh, I just wanna make it clear on that. It's, it's not the town. Okay, so having said that, I just wanna clarify that with you. That, that would be correct. Let's, we, we have made this proposal in 2000, uh, what are we back in 19 now? So yes, that is our proposal. We will fine tune it, clarify it, to, to stick with plan A, make sure everything is, is written to, to proper terminology. And we will resubmit that as the only plan submitted. And, and we will move on from there. Excellent. Okay. That sounds good. Grant, you've got another question. And then Shelly. So, so I am not here to, I am not here as Green Mountain ATV. Okay. I am Thanks here as a taxpayer. Thanks for clarifying that. Same with Go ahead, Shelly. Oh. Thanks, Shelly Severinghouse, uh, Morristown uh, resident. I have um I have a couple questions. Um, one is um will the proposal include any regulations or guidelines around who gets access? So, for instance, I know other towns like Danville will do residents only. Will and and will there be any discussion around speed limits or hours or insurance? Or I feel like there's potentially some other guidelines. So that's one question. My second is. I understand for either plan A or plan B that there's a section of um, Route 15, which I understand would have to actually be um, state um, permission, not town. And I understand in Johnson that um, that wasn't allowed, that access wasn't allowed. So this is a you know resident wondering about um, clarity around that, especially as we all want some more clarity around the proposal. So those are two questions. And then one just comment about, um, I know there's there's a lot of uh, kind of anecdotes around um, the amount of revenue that would be brought to the town. I just would like everyone to kind of consider um, displacement. <laughs> So right now, Morristown has a has a really strong um, non-motor recreational economy with a lot of people coming to this area to to bike either on mountain bike trails or on the road or gravel roads or hiking and skiing. And I just uh, I just am concerned that we might overlook people potentially not coming here. And that's something that's going to be really hard to actually capture. But I just just urge everyone to look at a, a bigger picture when it comes to the, the economics um, for it all. But I would appreciate some clarity around the, the two questions around uh, kind of regulations and who would determine that as well as around Route 15. Thank you. Thank you, Shelly. Shannon, can you clarify that? And then Mike, I'll, I'll take your question in a minute. Go ahead. I can. I mean, as for regulations on speed, uh, insurance, things like that, uh, the state has mandated that as of this year, actually part of last year, but this year they're going to start going to start enforcing it that all ATVs that are that are on the road be insured. So that will be part of it, and that will be a be a minimum liability, the same as you can in a in a car that you don't need to insure for collision. Um, also, as for the Route 15 question uh, with plan A um, that would possibly create a 90 degree crossing from route 15 to months so we're planning sorry let me just read for a second a 90 degree crossing from route 15 to months and if that was enacted uh, that would be a question from the state of Vermont for a crossing which typically is not an issue. Uh, Johnson's issue that they had was, as far as I can read into it, uh, was a miswording. They thought we wanted all of one or a good portion of 100C entering Johnson, uh, amongst some other things that weren't anything that we we proposed. 
So I believe at this time that is being reviewed to, to correct the clarification of, of wording on where their route one or route 15 access would begin and end. But I'm not completely clear on that. But I do know there was some writing in there on route 100 C that was not anything that was discussed. It just somehow worked its way into the picture. But uh, speed, speed, any of those regulations, um, they would be dictated by the town, whether the town wanted to keep it as their posted speed limit, which I believe on, as for Silver Ridge Road, I believe is 25. Um, if they wanted less than that, as if the board wanted less than that, we would be absolutely post it to, to whatever they were comfortable with. My suggestion is road speed at 25, for the fact that it keeps you from not being an obstacle if somebody's coming up behind you and you're doing 10, but but that's completely up to the board on how they would like to to word that. If yeah, that, if that answers you. In the proposal, <clears throat> Mike, go ahead. So, as a taxpayer in this town, uh, a lot a lot of taxpayers' dollars went to fixing up the rail trail. A lot of taxpayers' dollars went to the dog park. Um, fixing up the oxbow. Um, I've done my part for the town, giving them money for people to recreate. Um, but my recreation um, doesn't seem to be as important to the other taxpayers. I'm not even going to say the majority of them. Just, there's a few taxpayers that seem to think my recreation doesn't seem to matter. So as a taxpayer in this fine town we have, um, I guess... <laughs> You know, moving forward, uh, I guess it, it would be a no vote for rail trail money, dog park money. Um, you know, one hand washes the other. If I'm giving you money for your recreation, where you know, where's my where's my gravy? Thanks, Mike. It's right in the comment. Okay, <clears throat> we're gonna move on to the next subject. So are you Thanks, closing Bob. out, Bob? Go ahead. Are you closing out the discussion for the ATVs? Yes. Okay, for so tonight. I had some questions that didn't get answered. Like, how do I appeal this for me personally? Okay, go ahead. I wanna know how I can appeal this. What's my next step? The, the, the select board makes the decision on this. There is no place to appeal to it. So your words, your word is it. Yes. And, and as far as the town activities, yes. We can allow or disallow um, ATVs on our town road. So and why don't you? So why don't you, Bob? If you, you just said you can, so why don't you? Because we agreed that we are going to have let the taxpayers all decide. It's the fairest way to let all the taxpayers. I know initially some of the board members felt that they they should decide as a board. I know Brian. I don't want to put words in your mouth, Brian, but I know uh, I believe you thought that way as well. And for me, as it became apparent with this becoming such a contentious issue, that it should be decided by the taxpayers by everybody, you know, So um, all this information, all this work that I've put into this, I've done everything that's been asked of me. I followed every rule that should have been followed and I'm still ending up right where I'm, I'm still, I'm feeling defeated. Well, you're not, you're not, I mean, all the work you're doing is going to come to a vote, but it's just not going to come to a vote tonight. You know, it's not so long to wait to wait until it happens. Uh, all the work you're doing and have done, and I appreciate it 100%. I, I would have liked you to share the uh, the letter that Jeff wrote or the information that was sent to you by the ATV dealer. Uh, I can do those, that. That's all, that's all pertinent research. I that, can. Uh, our taxpayers don't know. So and, I can do that, Bob. How do I do that? If I send it well, to Dan, he's not going to put it on paper. You can do it on front porch form. You can. You can put it out there. Uh, all that stuff's important. Everything you're doing is not a thing. 
we just are not going to decide it tonight. Right. Um, so this information that I've sent to Dan, like I've sent him a couple of things. Nope, I'm not putting that on the list because it's a secondary. I don't know. Right, we're not, right? Right. So I'm gathering this information. I have met my max on on um, front page forum posting, so I'm not able to post anymore on there, which is probably not <laughs> a, a bad thing. <laughs> And I have boundaries, I get it. All right, so I'm not able to post that, right? So I have posted it on Facebook, I have shared it. I have tried sending it to Dan. What else can I do? Okay. Yeah. We can't post third, part, third party uh, things like that on the town's website. It's not the right right thing for us to do. Um, you know, I don't know how the rest of the board feels if it could be posted on the ATV link. Um, I guess that's up to us if we want to do that. Dan doesn't recommend it. He recommends us not to do something like that. Um, I believe we can if we want to, but um, it's against recommendations and, and uh, we try to honor that because he gives us good advice for the most part. Judy, what did you just say? I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. I agree with Dan not to post data information on Front Porch, on um, uh, our website. The town website. The town website. Even we though it's that we it's ask a friend of yours to put it on front porch form for you. Right. Doesn't have to be coming just from you. That's right. So I, what my comment to you is it's not in vain. All this work and time you put in, I know. I, I was delighted to hear that 90% um, of the people you surveyed, surveyed on the Woods Road said the same thing that I did. That they said yeah. to me. I was just so. going to say um, everything that I gathered, Bob, was exactly almost exactly what you gathered. And I appreciate you going out there. And I apologize for any members who th thought less of that. Apparently it's not pertinent information. So I'm just, I, um, I can't let this go. Like I said before, right. it's personal. I'm not gonna, it's a fight that I'm fighting. It's a right that I have. And right. it just would be we nice. Take action on it tonight, Lisa. I get it. Sorry. All right. Is there any other comments on it? We're going to move on to the next item. Thank, thank you, ahead. Bob. And Rome wasn't was built in the day. Thank you. And thank you to the board for all your time spent on Thank you. All right. We'll move to number 11, advanced notice of solar project expansion. You guys, I think, already commented on this, but we did, we did. notice that um, okay. Just let you know they're going to be expanded in. If you have any comments, you'll, you'll get this a, a formal notice they just like to send out. So if there's anything, questions that you have about it, um, from, I what I remember, too, I from what I remember, that the board had, and this was the Hess, the Hess property? Yes. Okay. Yeah, nobody else see no, it. No, no, it was born. This was born. Oh, born. born. Oh, born. And it was back in the same area. So yeah, the same area. area. Yeah. yeah. Right where they have their, um, uh, what's that? The tank or something near Green Mountain um, landscaping? It's up back there. Yeah. No, before no, that. No, way before that. Born, you know our born fuel tanks are there on Route 100? Just past Charlie Hatch. Right there. Yeah, yeah. Right there. Right there. Okay. On the left. Top of the hill. They've got, a, yeah. they've got their own solar farm there. And oh, okay. And behind it. All right. the Hess, on the Hess property. Okay. I, was confused, I thought this was the Hess property. Uh, no. No, this one. Right. But it's right beside it. It's right beside it. Yeah, I know yeah. you guys have reviewed this before. The only one that you really have was the one on down on the floor. Uh, right. But this wasn't it. So. Right. Okay. So we do, we don't have to take it. Not everything. I'm just, you know, I'm just giving you the notice that I received yeah. the mail to the select board. Thank you. Okay. All right. Next, remove Park the Recreation Committee member. Judy. Oh. oh and, Judy. Um, we're asking uh, to remove John Duffy from our our role because. He hasn't been able to attend our meetings, and it's, it's due to the um, having the uh, what's it called? Quorum. The quorum. Yeah. So it affects our quorum. That's the only reason we're doing this. Okay. Do you need a motion? I think we do. Do you have a motion? Shall I make a motion? You can. Okay. <clears throat> make a motion to remove John Duffy's name from Parks and Recreation Committee as a Parks and Recreation Committee member. I have a motion from Judy. Do I have a second? A second by Gary. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye, Brian. If it's okay to vote, I'd say yes. If it's okay to vote. 
The rest of the board? Aye. 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 Motion is passed unanimously. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. Welcome. Andy, are you going to talk about um, the director? Oh, I wasn't, no. But should I do that yeah, now? Please, yeah. Okay, so we, we met and we put out, uh, the town officers put out an, uh, a notice for a, the director for the Parks and Recreation, no, Summer Rec Program. We got one applicant who didn't have any experience running a program like that or any educational experience. So we've just had to, the whole park, the whole summer rec program is it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Okay. But I think the good side of that is we, we all got together and we discussed it and came up with a good plan for making sure that next summer that it's back, I think, in a lot better position than it's ever been. So I think everybody realized the need that to not depend on volunteers to, to come back and, and, and really organize it and, and move it to the next step next year. I think, next year. I think what we need direction from the select board is when can we start putting out uh, when can we start hiring somebody? We don't want to wait until June of next year. Right. So do we start doing it in January? Yeah, January, February. Is, that, yeah. That's my recommendation. What's the okay. current budget for parks and recreation or for summer rec or park recreation is falling, is falling under their Well, there's, that's kind of a, a really a little bit of a difficult because there's, there's two pieces. I think we put the town puts $20,000 a year in yeah. taxpayer funds. Right. Yeah. And then there's the, the user fees. So, and I think the whole structure has got to be changed on the user fee of that end a little bit because it, it's really, really affordable property or program. You want to keep it like that, but I think to, to make it that one little touch better, the next step to get it up to, I think you're going to have to look at some of the user fees and get some of those to come up a little bit. Too. Change that budget. Change the budget. So, I, I think it's, it's, a, it's kind of a two-part question. There's the user fee piece of it, and then there's the tax be, you know, the, the, the taxes that the town raises. So I think getting somebody started to do it and, and looking at the rates and building that budget in the January time frame, or actually probably the, the budget, town time. budget time frame will be the start time to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine I'm talking about as we form a budget going forward for 2022 yep. is to look at yes. that budget, what it would cost to hire a director, how, what we want the program to look like as far as staffing. Correct. So we can build a budget that works and then we can the board will discuss it. And, and we've kept we we always keep money kind of in a reserve account so that the program is never completely out of funds. Mm -hmm. So we we've always done that because it always has to have those things. So it's kind of once again it's that two part question that you know we have to work on. Yeah. Right. So you would suggest Parks and Rec then work with Eric yes. to get that started? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And once again, I think you should have somebody on board in January. Because there's a lot, you know, because realistically, that's when the, the, the training and all that stuff has to start being arranged. If you're not doing it by then, right. then, then you're way behind. I mean, if you're going to the park, there's a lot of safety and there's, you know, you can, they bring Bill in, they do CPR, and all the safety training that goes along with it. And I think you need to have somebody look at that and once again take that to the next level up. So, I mean, we would have to have somebody hired by January. So we start the process back in November. Okay. Yeah, in my mind, I was thinking when we start getting into budget season, we're going to take a look at that and change the budget to accommodate that because we're going to be hiring somebody. So, but that's coming. Yeah. Good. Okay. Good. Excellent. All right. <clears throat> Next, approve the warrants. Do I hear a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the warrants. Motion by Eric. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Judy. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye, Brian. Aye. The rest of the board? Aye. 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 Motion is passed unanimously. Next, TA report. There's a couple of things. Um, right now, the, the current schedule has a TV meeting at the optical on July 6th. And, and uh, Sarah and I just want to check. You want to have the regular meeting at 5 here. Yeah. And then recess and go down to the optical after that. Yeah. yeah. Before we we're putting things out and looking at schedule, we just want to be confirmed that's what the board still wants to do. Yeah. Okay. Got that. And we need to do a rain date. Rain date? Rain date following week. Following Monday or Tuesday. Yeah. The sixth of the Tuesday is the fifth is the holiday if you want to keep for. Um, Monday. 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 What would be July 12th? Yeah. Monday. Yes. Yeah. 
question um is there going to be a neutral moderator there to help with that okay yeah. all right and the um decisions of how long people can talk and such we're gonna we're gonna try to go like a town meeting go by like robert's rules which will be that that sort of format we don't have it all nailed down with dan you want to bubble off here you bought too yeah we're gonna we're talking about it we're we're uh, approaching people to to be possible moderators and uh, we're going to work it out. We will have uh, a whole format and agenda set up for it. Yes, that is. A, a, we get that question quite a bit. So, thank you. Anything else? Yeah. Two things. Um, open meetings. You know, with the, the governor lifted restrictions down, we're actually in phase three. Does the board want to start allowing public back into the meetings? Yes, I get a lot of calls every day. I don't know what you guys think, but people are saying, "Why? When are you going to open the offices?" And and uh, I know it just opened up last week, but uh, I'm ready to if you guys feel comfortable. What does it mean if people aren't vaccinated? Well, then they would still need to wear masks. I mean, you're, you're allowed so many people um, per square foot. Right. Like and social that. distance. And social distance um, if, if they are not vaccinated. Um, so 50 square feet. 50 square feet. So, I mean, even with the situation, not to name names, but, you know, we're... <laughs> have you asked? Have you asked the staff? Have you? Well, well, that's the here? second thing. When you open the building, I'm going to meet with the staff <clears throat> on Wednesday just to, to get some of their feedback. But I wanted some feedback from the select board. You know, my my original plan was to to work towards opening the building after we hit the the phase three standard, so to speak, and we're there. You know, um, Sarah and I have been doing some research just to see where the, the things are for Royal County. I think I looked at it today, and just to give you 70, almost 77 percent of people in Royal County have had at least their first shot, yeah. and roughly 54 percent of people are fully vaccinated. So it says a lot that you know we're, we're really moving in that right direction. And once again, the whole plan for opening up the building was when we got to phase three. Well, we're at phase three now. Um, you know, the governor's lifted the max mandate on people that are fully vaccinated. It's an honor system, so, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, we I think we do have, you know, there's the universal guidance that's out there. We've looked at that on what else we're supposed to have in place, you know, in the clerk's office and still in the finance department. We have the, the sneeze seals up, you know. I, quite frankly, can't justify it to myself why we're keeping the building closed anymore. I would like to keep the bathrooms closed off for public access for a little bit longer. That's because we don't have people clean until such a point in time that all the restrictions are lifted and we get completely back to normal. Um, so I you know I just if there's any feedback from the select board, you know, before I take it to the staff on Wednesday to discuss it with that. Well there's still be restrictions we're sitting like three feet apart out there, or is there nothing? Well, right now, if there's no restrictions, if you're, if you're vaccinated, there, there's no social distancing. Okay. That's right. right. Um, you know, if you're vaccinated, if you're fully vaccinated, there's no mask, there's no social distancing required. So if someone comes in with a mask on, then, then they would they sit in a special area? <laughs> no, I think, you know, kind of do what we're doing now, you know, um, you know it's once again, if they have masks, they can still social distance from everybody. We can certainly do that. We could squeeze the staff together a little bit closer since we all know each other. <laughs> you know? um, and I think we're going to try to have a step back up before the next meeting um, with Sarah back on that side of the room, which will open up things a little bit more. Um, so she can see the, the TV. We just need some cables and stuff to do that with. We looked at that today, which I think will make things. And I think we may be able to move the camera over to that angle so it's kind of an angle across rather than straight on. Um, yeah, we're going to play with some of that stuff um, so that we can you know, make make it a little bit more fun. You think you're still going to try to do the virtual? Plus well, right that's, again, that's up to the board, too. If, you know, I, I think you're going to start having. Yeah. You're going to start having 
you know, open meetings, do you still want to carry on with the, the Zoom meetings and the virtual meetings? I think so. Um, you know, I think it's for easy well, for, for at least for Green Mountain Access yeah. to be able to, to, to broadcast it and then televise it later on. So, yeah. but once again, you know, I'm kind of going one step at a time, you know. Um, how do we have to make a most important when we do it? Okay. <laughs> No, what I'm saying is if you want to, you want to ask the staff how they feel about it, if they feel okay, go ahead and do it, or if you want to. I've talked to a lot of staff. I just want to get together with them on Wednesday and go through it again. And right. See if there's any concerns that they have that I can address. Yeah, because I know uh, I was just listening to the radio last week, in tail end of last week, St. John's very select board met, and they made a motion and opened up John to say it. You guys did make the most to close it, but we I never did. did we? I don't think so. I think no. I just was following the protocols. So that's right. 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 All those restrictions that we were talking about, but we're there. So I, I think we ought to get back to normal, you know, unless there's anything out there that I'm missing. Eric, what do you think? I, I'm ready to help up. Brian, what about you? Sounds good to me. Great. Judy? Yeah, fine. I'm good with it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. That's, um, and then just so you know, Eric and I are, are already working together still. Um, you know, I'm trying to get his name on all the email lists that, that I'm on right now. And then anything that's coming up that's important and relevant, I'm, I'm starting to loop into it so that we can turn it that much faster and easier. So that's good. And that's been working well, I think, for both of us. So um, it's you know, that type of thing where I know it's going to be a carry on. But we're working on together on that already. The volume of information is easier to digest at a slow rate. <laughs> rather than showing up on day one and having it dumped all on your one. Right. You still haven't complained about it. Though. Yeah. I, I am so excited for this. <laughs> I really look forward to it. Great. Is that it? Well, the other thing, we're, we're taking a pool on when that excitement ends. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the day after you leave. I've got three months. <laughs> the next day. That's a good idea. We'll do that tomorrow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. That's it. Thank you. Any questions for Dan? Yeah. Thanks, Dan. Thoughts for concern. Gary. It's taking a minute. Um, nothing more. And is, uh, where are we at on high security? Everything's been submitted, you know, but we haven't heard anything back on when they'll schedule a hearing yet. Storage is already submitted. Sometime next year. Probably. Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. Judy. So thanks, Bill, for the information you sent out about uh, the 60 EMTs and other healthcare people, or not emergency people, who died because of COVID. It was a very sobering list to look at and read and see the ages and the uh, where people lived and gender and so on and so forth. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah, thank you. The sort of starting part of that, uh, how many of them died going to other places to help? I just want to thank you and uh, the public that stuck up for me tonight. So, I uh, like I said, I I have no bias. I I have no, from what I understand, to be a conflict of interest. To be should be a financial thing. I don't own one of them. I just want. I'm trying to do the right thing. That's all I want all right. to say. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. You know, and and uh, you know, a lot of the public doesn't know it, but I've taken an awful lot of. Um, your lead over the years, the past 13 years, about conflicts and all that being biased. And I learned, first off, that you're absolutely not. And, um, and second is, uh, you know, it's not a, it's not a complex. You're, you're not biased. You have an opinion, just like every one of us on the board do. And, um, you know, that's why we stick up for you. You're one of us. And no different than uh, the people in the, in the public. They all have an opinion, too. And, you can have an opinion before, uh, for or against, it doesn't matter. That's why it's a democracy. 
If I have two sides after the fact, no, you have to do that. <laughs> Go ahead. What we do up here as a select board is protect property. That's what I was. What you, what you might be put at the end was it is not our proposal. It is a proposal brought by us as we see proposals brought from many different entities over the year. Uh, and then we either take an action on it because it's something we feel comfortable doing. In this case, we have a proposal that's come to us from uh, the, the club and uh, it's taken on a life of its own over the winter. And there's a lot of people riding in on it. So none of us is comfortable in making a decision as a board. So as a matter of protecting the process, we offered to go, let this go to a vote. Uh, and the, the, the public communication, the public hearing that we're, we're going to have in July is simply to allow people to voice their opinions. It's not a, to attack each other. It's simply to voice their opinions, present any information that may be relevant, and then uh, and move on from there to whatever vote is. That is part of our democratic process. And our job here is not only to make decisions, but to protect that process. So, okay. All right. And I, I'll, I'll leave it with that. Is there any other concerns? Any other business? I want to thank you, Bob, for facilitating a great meeting again. Thank you. Sometimes not very easy. <laughs> no. no, you make it look easy, though. Go ahead, Bob. Um, I just want to talk for a minute about how we are uh, bracketing uh, EMS week, which is this week. I don't think it's still this week. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We took part in an event on Saturday uh, that was a Route 100 barnstorming event uh, with our water barrier animals colleagues. They actually started in Granville and did vaccines in Granville, Warren, Duxbury, and Waterbury. Uh, they delivered 64. Uh, we did uh, Stowe, North High Park, and Keaton, uh, along with some of their members and even some members from Rescue Wing and Broward. Uh, and we delivered 60 on Saturday. Uh, so the whole event, we got uh, 124 vaccines delivered up the Route 100 corridor or Saturday, uh, Saturday during the day. Uh, we're bracketing that with a pop up vaccine clinic at our building on Sunday, the 23rd, from 10 to 2. Uh, we're not going to front porch forum and uh, Facebook pages today. Uh, and uh, we're going to involve. Uh, 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 then these people from Morrisville Fire to help us with logistics and traffic. Uh, we'll have some of our order friends come up. Uh, we think we've got about 200 jobs and jobs and one dose uh, vaccines to, uh, uh, to give that day. Um, so uh, spread the word 10 to 2 at our place. Uh, we're hoping uh, the weather holds and we'll be able to just do it uh, in the parking lot right next to the building. If the weather is uh, not good, we'll open the base up and we'll do it inside. What's your age bracket going to Johnson & Johnson? Johnson Johnson, 18 and up. 18 and up. Thank you. 18 and up. So uh, Sunday the 23rd. Okay. I'm tempted to. Okay. All right. Thanks, Bill. No worries. Anybody have anything else? Oh, Lisa, sorry. I see your hand. I just want to mimic, um, I just want to go back to Eric and just thank you for saying that. I appreciate everything that you guys are doing. Tonight, I was uh, speaking on my own behalf, not as the club. So as a resident, I would have this conversation. I just want to make that clear and on the record. Thank you. Anything else? Nope. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. I have a motion by Eric and a second by Judy. All in favor, say aye. 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 We are adjourned.